certain things that you wouldn't even say to your worst enemy that you say to yourself why do you do that how how can you navigate the world and be in the pursuit of happiness or self-empowerment if you don't even like yourself because life is not just about living with yourself it's also about loving yourself and if you think that you're not worthy and you think that you don't deserve love or happiness we need to work on that immediately because that is going to trickle into every other aspect of your life this is what i'm doing this is what i stand for this is who i am take it or leave it and if you're gonna leave it please leave quietly and don't make a disturbance hey guys and welcome back to my channel my name is v and for today's video we are talking all about how to stop self-doubt in its tracks okay let me tell you something this is part of the empowerment series basically like a series where we're taking back control of ourselves our self-belief our self-love and what's at the core of all of that the word self is all about you and self-doubt is actually very much a lot about you i know that there are a lot of facts Factors that play in there and a lot of factors that can get involved and make things look messy like you know outside noise outside people's opinions different things like that but at the core of it self-doubt is really something that we can overcome it's not easy it is not a task that's gonna happen overnight it is not something that you say okay self-doubt imposter syndrome any of those things I'm gonna deal with you and you're gonna be gone no it is a constant work in progress something that you have to dedicate yourself to and literally invest time energy and lots of different practices to make sure it happens so when self-doubt kicks in for example when you're thinking okay let's just use things that I have done that can be helpful so let's just say I wanted to apply for Harvard right or Stanford because I've never been there before right I wanted to apply for Stanford and I really wanted to go there for a master's degree but I had self-doubt within myself what I would do because I do have moments of like creeping in self-doubt but I always know how to tackle it because I have the systems in place so in that situation where I want to go to Stanford I really want to do a master's there but I feel like maybe I'm not good enough or maybe I won't get in what I'll do instead of making it a me thing as in I am intrinsically in within myself not good enough for Stanford I will focus on the fact of why do I think this okay like what is at the core of this making me think I can't go to Stanford if I sit down I'm making notes and it turns out Stanford are looking for A stars and I actually only have B grades maybe that's where the self-doubt comes from because I feel underqualified because maybe I am to the grade system I am technically underqualified for what they want does that mean that I am not good enough for Stanford no it just means I might have to retake some classes and then be able to get in there or I might have to put in a mitigating circumstances form that explains actually the B grades you're looking at they are B grades however for the place that I live in or the context where I got them in or the school they actually will equal out to be your A star grades it's just that I earned by in a different way so you give a mitigating circumstances form that explains why maybe the grades that they want you haven't got or you retake a class if you know that you can achieve the grade that they want so either way at the core of it it wasn't a me thing it was just a thing about the grades that I've got right now if I have got the grades I've got these A stars for Stanford and I've got everything that they're looking for but then I still feel like I'm not good enough that is where the problem really begins to trickle in because you've now got to look deep within yourself and ask yourself but why if you literally have the requirements in fact you might even be overqualified for what they want what's at the core of you that makes you believe that you don't deserve to be there when you want to be there and we need to do a lot of work here we need to do a lot of work to dig deep within ourselves and start being more positive and more kind to ourselves now something that I do when I've realized because like I said there's two types of self-doubt it's either self-doubt because you think that and you know that you won't meet the actual physical requirements that are needed those A stars or it's the other self-doubt where you have got the A stars but you feel like you don't belong because you feel like you're not worthy you need to remember this okay know your worth and then add tax you need to understand that you are incredible you are amazing and there is no reason why you don't deserve a place there just like anybody else and if you think that you're not worthy and you think that you don't deserve love or happiness we need to work on that immediately because that is going to trickle into every other aspect of your life it's going to trickle into how you navigate relationships 
friendships, even family situations, how you view yourself in the workplace, how you view, it's not just gonna be a grades and Stanford thing, it's gonna trickle into everything else. So you've got to nip it in the bud as soon as you can. And you do that by doing certain things like practicing words of affirmation, okay? I do this a lot and it really helps me. I talk to myself a lot and I tell myself, you are the best. Not in a way of like, don't try because the world should just give you everything because you're the best, but in the best in the sense of you're a good person. You have good intentions. You try hard, you work hard, you do everything you should do. That makes you the best, right? The best version of yourself. You try and you work hard. So why would you not be kind to yourself? That's what I ask myself. And I'm sometimes asking people, how come you're so nice to everybody else around you, even strangers? And it's the certain things that you wouldn't even say to your worst enemy that you say to yourself. Why do you do that? How, how can you navigate the world and be in the pursuit of happiness or self-empowerment if you don't even like yourself? Because life is not just about living with yourself. It's also about loving yourself. Okay? Go out and get a journal. Get a journal and write down your thoughts write them down because sometimes when you're saying i hate myself i hate this i hate that it's it's it's, it's easy to do because you've been doing it for so long no one is there to hold you accountable nothing is happening you just say it and nothing else happens right but when you write it down you're taking it from this private space in your head to somewhere else it's almost as though you're putting the emotion there and when you can look at it sit with it you'll start to get uncomfortable. Like, why am I writing such awful things about myself? And then also what you'll start to see is you'll start to see development. Okay, the more that you're writing, journaling it out, you're gonna see some progress. Because right now, when you're not doing any of that kind of thing, like journaling, you don't see the change you're making. You might be making little teeny tiny steps, but you won't see that because you're with yourself all the time. But writing it down, journaling, talking to someone, couldn't recommend therapy enough if you need therapy seek a therapist it is not shameful it is not bad doesn't make you weak there's nothing wrong with vulnerability there's nothing wrong with saying i need some help okay i've done therapy before and it was helpful in the sense that it helped me realize where I actually was. Therapy helped me realize that I am content with a lot of things and that I'm at peace with a lot of things. And I didn't know that before. Like I felt like I was panicking about something that wasn't happening and therapy helped me clarify where I actually stood with myself, right? And it might do the same for you or it might do the opposite. It might help you realize some issues that you haven't worked through. So I think it's really important to, to be able to verbally express these things that you're thinking of yourself and once you start to see it and it's out there and you're holding it like this you start to realize that it ain't good okay and self-doubt will hold you back it'll hold you back so much there's so many things that you can do so many things that you can be and will be but because you're doubting yourself because of imposter syndrome it's gonna it's, it's kind of like it's stopping you from moving it's kind of keeping you stuck because the moment you want to do anything the whole the, tr the thoughts trickle in but I'm not good enough but I won't be able to do but I won't manage you will be wondering for so long what if I fail what if I fail what if I fail but what my friend what if you fly hmm? what if you do the thing that's on your heart and you fly okay what if you actually do it and what if it doesn't work out so what? The best thing here is that you've got an answer. You've been pursuing something for so long, you've had something on your heart and you're wondering what if, what if, what if, what if. Now you've done it and you know it wasn't quite for you. Or now you've done it, it didn't go well, but now you know what to fix. Now you know what to take forward. Now you know what elements to keep, what elements to not keep. Share your ideas with someone, okay? And self-doubt as well sometimes comes from a place of what other people have said to us right it comes from a place of valuing the opinions of those around us and then taking it in but let me tell you something let me tell you something if you were to take the advice of every single person that you meet every single day you will lose yourself you will lose yourself because the reason why you'll lose yourself is because if you if you speak the way that I speak with I don't know is this high pitch normal pitch I don't know what kind of voice I've got but let's just call it normal pitch if you speak with a pitch like mine then someone comes in the room and says V you're not loud enough now I'm going hi guys how are you how are you doing someone else comes in and says V that's way too loud I'm like okay hi guys how are you doing then someone else comes in and says actually could you sound a little more melodic and I'm like hi guys how are you doing before you know it I'm gonna be coming on this camera and going hi guys how are you doing 
up, down, left, right, in, out, all around. I don't know whether I'm coming or going because you're taking everybody's opinion and taking everybody's thoughts and it's going to change you. Before you know it, you'll lose yourself. So take it with a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. Adapt each piece of advice, pinch of salt, and then you make your own advice that works for you. So if you're feeling doubtful because of people around you, you might have to change the people around you. You might have to change the people around you. Okay? You can't grow with people who don't like how growth looks on you. Think about that. Do you think you can grow properly in a space where you're feeling self-doubt already, you're already worried about something, and then people just come and add to that worry? No, it's gonna hold you back. So you have to be brave, really brave, to put yourself first and decide that you're gonna do everything in your power to fight for you, your dreams, your passions. Life is way too short, okay? You need to live now, have fun, worry less, love harder, explore your passions. You owe it to yourself, you owe it to yourself. And self-doubt, self-doubt has no place in our household, no place. And when you are feeling self-doubt, make sure there's a system in place that can help you come out of that. So make sure you've got good friends who actually care about you. And you know you know it. You know you know the friends you should and shouldn't have. We all know that one person that you, you, it doesn't sit well in your heart, but you're afraid of cutting them off for another reason or another. And I've had that. I've had that in my life before. None of the stuff that I talk about, I haven't experienced. Like, I remember feeling self-doubt about things. I remember feeling insecure. I remember all of this. It's nothing that I haven't gone through. However, if I could go back in time and be younger again, I would have worried less. Because the more that you're worried that the more you're you're keeping yourself stuck somewhere you know you're not going to move because you're too scared if you move you won't win or you won't do anything you're scared that if you don't you'll fail so you're just in this constant limbo where you you can't do anything and it's just a horrible place to be in so i say be kinder to yourself go out and buy that journal so you can track your progress maybe journal once every two weeks or something just so you can read back and really write down why you think you're undeserving like genuinely not just say oh i don't think i can i don't think I... write down why like specifics be specific write down 10 reasons why you think you can't do it and in the same breath make sure you write down 10 reasons why you can because people are often so loud about the reasons why they can't 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 do something but then we're very quiet when it comes to championing ourselves look at me sitting in my dream office surrounded by all of these plaques and all of these you think i'm ever gonna be unkind to myself or dim myself down or make make a sure i don't shine bright enough to make sure other people are comfortable no this is my space this is my happiness and if you're gonna come into my office into my dream space you're gonna treat it accordingly you're not gonna come in here and ridicule me you're not gonna come in here and tell me to take down what's on my walls or what's around this room because it's mine and I worked for it and I think the more confident that you are and the more that you navigate this world as you want this world to see you the more that people will have to have respect for you because it's not like you're asking for their validation. You're literally telling them, this is what I'm doing. This is what I stand for. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. And if you're going to leave it, please leave quietly and don't make a disturbance. You know what I mean? And don't be afraid to lose people. Don't be afraid to lose people. If people are no longer working for you, if they're no longer serving you, if they're no longer doing right by you, if they're no longer uplifting you, if they're no longer existing in your world in a peaceful way, if they are no longer bringing you peace, it's time for them to go and you don't even have to make any apologies about that okay you need to be unapologetic about your dreams your desires and putting yourself first it's really important so good luck i mean i really believe in you guys self-doubt you can only stop it by working at it constantly words of affirmation good friends journaling seeing a therapist writing down the reasons why questioning yourself being kinder to yourself all of those things are steps towards eliminating self-doubt also use youtube use podcasts use books read more read more empowerment books i don't want to want to say it but read books like this they're really helpful listen to podcasts like to my sisters by renee and courtney make sure you're watching youtube videos like Brini lee or like mine or like 
and day to day like things that are positive uplifting motivating because you are what you surround yourself with you are what you consume and if you're on instagram and you're seeing all of these instagram models who are super super tiny waist and all of this stuff and something that's just not realistic to you and what you are unfollow 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 you get to create your feed and what you consume and what you see so why let it be something that depresses you why let unrealistic beauty standards affect you and how you view yourself when you're beautifully and wonderfully made <laughs> you're perfect the way you are so don't let what you're seeing on the internet define you you know um yeah that's pretty much it guys i love these kinds of videos i love this empowerment series i hope you guys are enjoying it as much as i'm enjoying making it and i guess i'll see you in the next video and i really really hope you start to kick self-doubt in the face and ask it up front why why not me why not you like why has it got to always be everyone else why have you always got to be everyone else's cheerleader when are you gonna step up and step out for you anyway thank you so much for watching my video i'm really enjoying this empowerment series please comment down below what you want to see next what you want us to be doing and i'll keep you updated and i'll keep making more videos i love you so much see you in the next video and please 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 pre-order my book called empowered by v kativu i am v kativu it's so pretty it's so gorgeous it's very yellow and it's all about empowerment how to live your life with passion and purpose so that's it it really helps me please pre-order thank you so much i love you and see you in the next video bye